And so the Lord is working with me on this, and I know we talk about resurrection and what does it really mean. I know we know we say that resurrection means to get up, and to get up from the dead, but when you look in the Greek and you look at what Matthew wrote and what that word resurrected means, this is what it means. It means a resurgence from death. And I looked at that and it was just so funny because just a couple of days before that, I was sitting there reading and looking at it, and the electrical power went out. You know what they call it? They call it a surge, a power surge. And it happens suddenly. And whenever it happens, it takes out everything around. And so I went back and looked at this, and it said resurgence means the surging back or a sudden onrush. And a lot of times we used to hear it say that when Jesus got up from the dead, they said, well, he... He was there and the angel rolled the stone back. Yeah. Jesus wiped his eyes and looked yeah. around to see where he was. Yeah. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Resurgence means sudden. It means quick. And when you think about that, evidence that this is the way it happened. When Jesus was laying on the stone, when the angel came down, when the time came, when God told him, rise, get up, Jesus. Jesus just got up. He didn't wipe his eyes. Some people say he didn't know where he was. He knew everything that was going on. Yeah. Because he's Jesus. And just to show you a point, whenever you see somebody that's brought back from all those drowning, and they do mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation on them, what happens? When they give them those compressions and give breath into them, when they come back, it's not a gradual thing. What do they do? They cough immediately and open their eyes. Yeah. That's what the resurgence is. Uh, when you see someone in the hospital and they say that their heart has stopped beating, and they take those electrical paddles and they give them an electrical shock, what happens? When that heart starts, it doesn't spun like an engine. It comes right back. And that's what Jesus did. The morning that Jesus got up, it was quick. And remember, Jesus always told his disciples, when you do it, do it quick. So when he got up, Jesus got up automatically. It wasn't a wiping of the eyes and wondering where he was. He got up. He took the death bandage from around his head. He folded it to one side. All the, the grave clothes that was on him, he was stepped out of the God had already dressed him in his glorious clothes. It was automatic. It was swift. It was rapid. It made me think about something else. I don't know if anybody here watched wrestling. And it used to be a wrestler they called the Undertaker. Y'all remember that? And all of a sudden they would meet him and he would be on the mat lying down. And they thought he was dead. And all of a sudden, what would he do? He would rise straight back up. Quick. Wasn't a, wasn't a, a slow that he rise straight back up. That's what resurgence is. When Jesus got up, he got up. He didn't just sit on the side of the bed, but he got up. He was ready yeah. to move. Yeah. Now you notice know the scripture said this. It talked about an earthquake. And a lot of times we just breathe right on past. We think that the earth just starts shaking all of a sudden. But there was a reason for that earthquake. And if you read the scripture, you notice it says, Suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven. So the earthquake wasn't just because of the ground shaking. The earth shook because the angel came down. Yeah. Understand, it shook because the angel came down. And not just did he come down, but because he came down so quickly. Yeah. It's what you would call a sonic boom or, or a shock wave. Have you ever been outside or been around one of these, these fighter pilot jets go across the sky? And they're going so quick, all you hear is a, a quick flash and a boom. The angel, when God said, go down, move so quick, it caused the sonic boom that shook the earth. That's why the earth shook. Uh, just give me a little, a little sample. When, when, when you, you deal with one of these F-16s or one of these supersonic jets, this is what happened. Get 
But you've already seen it. What happens is, when lightning comes down from the sky, and I know we felt this, but there was weather going on last week that you felt. Whenever lightning flash comes down, and thunder comes, and it's a, 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 a severe thunderstorm, what happens? And you sit in your house. The whole house rumbles, doesn't it? The whole house, that's the same thing that happened when Jesus got up. When the angel came down, he came down so fast that everything just shook. And when the soldiers saw it, and, when, and, and all the people and the priests that were guarding the grave saw it, they were filled. Because as soon as they saw the flash of light, as soon as they felt the earth rumble, they saw the angels sitting on the stone and rolling it away. So just imagine you're in your house and lightning flashes, and suddenly you see an angel of God sitting in front of you, dressed in white clothes, yeah. glittering and shining. They were stopping. And that's what happened to the soldiers. They didn't believe what they were seeing. Yeah. Because God was working so quickly. Now notice, remember you said he comes in the twinkling of an eye. That's how quick it happened. Yeah. Before they knew it, the angel had come down, he rolled the stone away, he was sitting on the stone, and Jesus had got up. Just that quick. Now this is something the Lord brought, and it was a question I know we all had. Why three days? Why did Jesus wait three days? Why did he get up the next morning? Why did he wait three days? Here are the reasons. He had to fulfill prophecy. And that prophecy had to be fulfilled. In other words, there was a foresight, there was a foretelling, now not fortune telling. Don't, 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 don't get the two mixed up. A foretelling of what would happen when the Christ that came to the earth. It said he would be in the grave and that he would rise after three days. Jesus himself said it. He said these words. He said, as Jonah was three days and nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days. He had to fulfill prophecy because that's what he came to do. The other reason why it was three days, it fulfilled the process. In other words, that was practice and procedure that had to be followed. Three days marked the end of a special Sabbath because remember, Jesus was celebrating the Passover. Passover was a Sabbath. In the old days, God had at least seven Sabbaths that the people had to follow. Feast days, offering days. Passover was a special Sabbath. And recognize that Jesus came for a special purpose. At the end of three days, it marked the beginning of a new week. And what did the Bible say when he came in, when he rose? He said, early that morning, at the beginning of a new day. And so Jesus made sure that he was bringing a new day to pass. Now notice, they had to celebrate all those Sabbaths in the Old Testament. Today we to celebrate one Sabbath. We hear this morning, this Sunday morning. We celebrate Jesus Christ. Amen? So just imagine if you had to go, not just on Sunday morning, but you had to come in Sunday morning, and then there was another feast day. Now these feast days lasted for seven to eight days. Yeah, yeah. And we complained about a couple of hours. Yeah. Seven to eight days. They were out there. They had to set up tents and, yeah. and sleep in tents and celebrate. Each one of these Sabbaths. That's what Jesus was doing. He read it was all those things and focused it on one, yeah. on him. Because he said, I am the Sabbath. The other thing about the three days. It fulfilled the proving. In other words, it served as evidence and testimony that Jesus was who he was. Remember when uh, the Pharisees said they would test him? And that was a custom in those days. That was a custom. And we kind of do it now, but in those days, you had to be dead or the body had to be lifeless for three days before they declared you dead. That body sit there for three days. That body would lay there for three days. Because they thought the possibility that if you got up after one, you really weren't dead. You might have been in a coma or going through some type of epileptic procedure. But you had to be there three days. That's why when Lazarus died, Jesus wanted to make sure 
they realized who he was. Yeah. He didn't go after three days, he waited four days. Yeah. Yeah. He said, if I wait four days, it's a guarantee. It wasn't no surprise. It wasn't by coincidence that Lambert's got up. Yeah. Four days, you know he's been dead. Yeah. And so when he called Lambert, what did he say? Lambert, come forward. Yeah. And Lambert was wrong. Jesus was proving that he was what he told him often men. He said, I am the resurrection. And so in order to prove that he was the resurrection, he had to stay there three days. And prove to man that he fulfilled not only God's prophecy, but their protocol. The other thing he fulfilled was purpose. He had to go there for three days because... When he gave his spirit to God, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. A lot of people think, well, you were just in the grave. Jesus had to go and perform the task that God had for him to do. He had all of our sins upon him. Yeah. And so what he had to do, he had to bury our sins. He had to bury our sins. Yes, sir. In other words, he got rid of them. That's why the Bible says, our sins are, are, are as far as the east from the west. Yeah. Said they're buried in a lake where they can't come up. Those old diggers used to say that. Yeah. Lord, bury my sins yeah. deep into the sea of forgetfulness. Yeah. Where I never rise at my judgment. Yeah. That's what they meant. Yeah. So Jesus had to fulfill that. So he went, buried the sins, but not only did he not bury the sins. Remember the old preacher used to say he went to hell and preached the revival. He went to hell, dealt with the devil because the devil was holding control of death and the keys to hell. So he went down. So just imagine the devil being surprised. He thought he was dead after he came off the cross. Yeah. Jesus goes down and tells him, give me to Give me what, Lord? Give me the keys. Yeah, I want the keys. Give me the keys to hell. Be mine. So death, you don't buy by his rules anymore. I have control. That's another reason why they were rumbling in the grave. Just imagine death. Knowing that he has control, he's taking everybody, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of the prophets. Jesus in the grave. The grave is home. And all of a sudden Jesus pops up. Death is wrestling with Jesus. Yeah. Trying to keep him down. Yeah. The grave is wrestling with Jesus. Yeah. Trying to hold him in. Yeah. So when you know you're trying to gap and hold in the one that has all the power, that's going to be wrong then. Yeah. Yeah. I know we say it, y'all. Sometimes children, you shouldn't do that. Don't y'all fight each other. Yeah. Y'all love each other. Yeah. How do mom and daddy know something going on in the house? When y'all get in the room, when y'all get to rumbling in the room, what happens? The whole house gets to shake. So if you can shake a house as small as you are, when you're wrestling and tussling, what do you think is going to happen when Jesus is wrestling with death in the grave? The whole earth is going to shake. After he did that, he had to make sure he brought up salvation in the earth. Because that's what God said Jesus would bring to us. Get rid of the sin. Get rid of the disease that was ailing us all over here. Buried. Whenever something's dead, you bury it. Sin was dead. Sin is dead. He buried the sin that was against him. Yes. Covered it up. But then when he got up, there was a rebirth of deliverance and salvation. Didn't have time to check this out, but I'm going to check it out. I want you to check it out. You ever learned something when you plant a seed? A seed is literally dead when you put it in the ground. But if you look germinate after three days, yeah. Yeah. you start seeing that sprout germinating up out the ground. Don't you? Yeah, sir, it usually takes about three days. You notice that? You bury a seed. And generally the first sign of the leaf and the sprout coming up is about after three days. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, going, I'm going to check it out. Let's check it out too. All right. Three days. Not a coincidence. It's all part of God's plan. Yeah. Three days. Yes, sir. Now when Jesus got up, he got up with all. Yes, sir. 
Wasn't part. He got up with him. In all position. That means he is the place. He is the point. Ain't no Muhammad, no Buddha, nobody else. Jesus is the one. That's why he said, I am that I am. He's the power. He has all power. That means he has all control. He has all power. If you want to run to somebody and get your hook up, go to Jesus. He has all provision. That means the terms and the conditions and the contract. Everything. Everything in the agreement. Going back to Jesus. It's tied to Jesus. All your guarantees, all your provisions, all your benefits, everything that are set down in that contract, all your terms, is locked into Jesus. Can you get around it? You know, you get a warning from your car and say, well, here's your conditions, here's the provision. Even with insurance, a lot of times, you always got these little, uh, what do you call it? Waivers. Waivers? What else? Deductibles. Ain't no deductibles in Jesus' contract. There's nothing that you have to pay. Because the Bible, the words that Jesus paid it all. Oh. The other thing, he has all preeminence. That means the each, the entire, the every. Jesus is everything all the time. He's everything that you need. Whatever you need, joy, peace, help, inspiration. He's all of it. A lot of people say they're going around in a lifetime to see what they can find. I'm looking for myself. I'm seeing if I can find what I'm supposed to be, who I'm supposed to be. I'm looking for this special person. You ain't got to look far. Jesus said, I'm right there. Yeah. All you got to do is call me. That's all. Just call me. Yeah. Bible tells us that all of this is true. Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, I have been given all authority. This is what he told the disciples when he left to go to the Lord. I've given the authority in heaven and on earth. And he said this. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Then look what Peter said. Peter wrote this about Jesus. Because he was with him. He looked at him. He said, now Christ has gone to heaven. He is seated in the right place of honor next to God. That's at the right hand of God. And look what he said. And all the angels and authorities and powers accept his authority. Amen. Know why I know what God said? Remember the story of Joseph and Potiphar? And Joseph and Pharaoh? How Pharaoh gave Joseph all authority over everything he had in Egypt? Yeah. When he was in Potiphar's house, Potiphar gave him authority over everything? When Jesus went to the cross and got up to the grave and ascended back to glory, God said, all power and authority is given unto you. Everything goes through you. Everybody goes through you. If they don't go through you, they can't get to me. And that's what Jesus said. If you don't come through me, you can't get to the Father. And so the angels and all, they go to Jesus. And that's why John said, when the time comes when all of us are gathered together, all of us are going to view the angels crying, holy, holy, holy. Yeah. And then the Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, yeah. every tongue shall confess. Jesus gets up since he got up. I like that part he said. That. Jesus gets up since he got up. See, ever since he got up that morning, he's been getting up in men, women, boys, and girls. He's been getting up our hearts, our minds, our soul, and our spirit. He gets up in our walk. That's what the old folk was saying. He gets up in our talk, our living, our giving, our essence, and our being. When you receive Jesus, he gets up in you. And when he gets up in you, you're never the same. I promise you, you're never the same. That's why the old people say, I wouldn't have a religion I couldn't feel sometimes. Jesus will remind you that he's there. Yeah, right. When you least expect him to be there and think that he's not there, he'll touch you. Yeah. 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 Ye
white man to get used to this. Sometimes I would be driving in the car, be sitting at the house, and all of a sudden she just kind of see my body just do that. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. You got the chills, you got a cold. I said, no, yeah. everything all right. Whenever you touch it, you can't, yeah. you can't help but move. Yeah, yeah. And it'll be at the least expected time. I would be in the office sometimes. I had to be careful because I'd be sitting down and be reading or listening. All of a sudden, yeah. and I would get up because I didn't want to sit at the office because I couldn't do like I do at home sometimes. When he hits me at the house, I just let go. Yeah. But I couldn't do that. Somebody need to escort him out of the office. You, you know what it would be like? Remember that stewardess? And that pilot on that plane? When all of a sudden she just screamed, ah! you, you want to do that sometimes. Yeah. But you can't do it everywhere because they don't understand. Yeah. But that's what it means when Jesus gets up in you. Yeah. He gets up in you. And don't say it's all over. It's all over. But because Jesus got up, this is the important part. We get up. Amen. Understand? Because Jesus got up, we get up. Yeah. Amen. Romans 8 and 11, it says this. It says, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead. Yeah. Now notice what he says. He said, lives in you. Amen. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living in you. So this is what's going to happen. When we all leave here, uh, that body is laid out in front of the altar. But that Spirit goes back to God. But what's going to happen? When the time comes, when God is ready, and Jesus comes back, he talks about all of us being resurrected again. Those bodies, all these bodies that we're in, I know we look good now. I know we look good this morning. But what's going to happen? The same way that Jesus got up, we're going to get up. He's going to put us back in the bodies in the form of this, but it won't be these fleshly bodies. They'll be glorified bodies. They're going to be shining, beautiful. Just like y'all got all this on your face, shining and beautiful and highlights. That's what we all want to look like. Won't be any bruises. Won't be any scars. Remember, when Jesus got up, the only thing that's left on his back from being beaten and whipped and crucified are the, 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 the remembrances of what he said he would be. But the Bible said he would be what he done to him, said he would be pinched. That's why the only thing you will see on Jesus are nail prints in his hand, nail prints in his feet. And the room in his side. One, two, three, four, five. You know what that number five is? Grace. Other than that, Jesus is in all of his glory. The thing we have to remember is this. This is what we want to know. From this point on, resurrected means this when you're dealing with us. It all means you've been regenerated in the spirit. Because what did Jesus tell Nicodemus? He said you must be born again. You're edified by the word. In other words, the word of God now has been placed in your heart. Because God made a promise. He said, I'm not going to write it on stones. I'm going to write it on the table of the flesh of your heart. Because those stones can break. But once I write it on the inside, whenever you have to call it up, it will be coming to you. And it will come and give you strength and joy and reassurance. That's why he puts it on the inside. He said, you're going to be sanctified and true because Jesus prayed that we'll be sanctified. So when somebody starts telling you to sanctify, I say, thank you. I appreciate it. Because that's what God wants us to be. And what did he say truth will do? Truth will make you free. Then you're unified in his love because he had to say we will be one with him. 
He was resurrected. Resurrect. We received him. We are resurrected. Yes. He said we'll be reconciled with God. The separation is over. We back together now. We reunited with God because of Jesus Christ. Yes. The other thing, we've been redeemed by his blood. The Passover was the time that the sheep was slaughtered for atonement of sin. Jesus came and became the sheep and was slaughtered for the atonement of all of our sin. Endued with power. The devil wants you to think that you're weak. But I'm here to remind you today that the devil is alive. Because Jesus said, I've given you power to tread on scorpions. Power to tread on serpents. Power over, what is it what he said? Over all the power of the enemy. So understand this. This is the way this thing works. The devil won't tell you what to do. You tell the devil what to do. When the devil come and whisper in your ears, you do like Jesus, step off. I ain't got time for it. Step off. Or just like Jesus told the demons when they were speaking, just shut up. Shut up. You're consecrated for service. In other words, now you've been cleaned up. You're ready now for everything that God has for you to do. You're transformed in glory. That means your presence will be like God's presence, like Jesus' presence. He says this, when we go to glory, we will see him as he is. And we shall become like him. Just like Jesus. Then it says, we entered into the joy of the Lord. What did Jesus say? He said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. But he said this, don't worry about the things in the world. There's going to be trouble in the world. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Then he says this, D means you've been delivered from death, hell, and sin. You ever can't hold your hostage no more. Death can't hold you hostage. The sting of death is gone. The power of the grave is gone. That's why the earth was shaking so much because they were trying to hold on to what they had. Amen. But Jesus shook it off and took it from. And that's what you had. You resurrected. Because Jesus resurrected every one of you who believe in Jesus are resurrected. Somebody says, well, I'm not dead yet. No. When you gave your life to Christ, dead man, dead woman was gone. Now before that, you were. Yeah. You like a zombie. You were walking dead man, dead woman. But now, yeah. you are alive. Yeah. Yeah. You're alive forevermore. Death can't shake you. Hell can't hold you. Yeah. Sin can't stop you. Yeah. Yeah. Just like a duck or a chicken. We're going to leave you with this. The devil tried to put it on you. The, the, all the sins and, and the burdens of life. You know what a duck does? You know what a, a chicken does when the rain falls on their feather? Y'all know what a dog does, don't you, when they get wet? Yeah. You want to mess with somebody when they start bringing stuff at you? Just look at it and go. Shake it off. Yeah, Shake it off. Yeah, Shake it off. Keep it resurrected. Keep it resurrected. Yeah, because Jesus rose, you rose. Amen. Because Jesus has risen, because you have Jesus in you. The same way that he ascended up the globe, that's the same way we shall ascend. Yeah. We shall ascend. Yeah.